smash, smash, smash. Hello? <laughs> it's the fish calling. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Today's video is gonna be about trolling for early season browns. Uh, how I like to approach it, uh, what are some of my favorite lures, and what I'm looking for uh, before I go fishing using maps and satellite images. So stay tuned, hopefully there's a few tips that'll help you put more fish in the boat or on shore if you're fishing from shore. Like I mentioned, early season um, brown trout, uh, everybody knows that we have them in Lake Ontario, and this year is gonna be particularly interesting because uh, we have more browns in the lake um, than we normally do. So the first thing I'd really like to talk about uh, is a few lures uh, that I like um, in that early season period, talking, you know, March, April, when that water's really cold. Aside from that, fishing shallow water, um, you don't need downriggers, uh, you don't need dipsy divers. A lot of the, the best opportunities for browns in that shallow water are gonna happen on flat lines uh, or really short lead cores or even just attaching some weight to your line. Now that's a whole other video in itself as far as planer board deployment and uh, how far out, how far back your line should be. So for this one, I'm just gonna keep it simple and talk about some of my favorite lures uh, that I like using in that uh, sort of six to 15 feet of water, early, early season. So the first uh, lure that I really like uh, is a Michigan Stinger Spoon. Um, the reason I like it, this is a Stingray size. So the Stinger is the full size or the mag size. And then the Stingray is a little bit smaller. The reason I like that spoon is because it's very thin and I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but you can see that. If you've ever got one of these spoons, you know that they're very thin. And that helps because they are effective when you're going slow. And early season when the water's cold, you wanna be going slow. So that's the reason why I like stingers. Now another bait um, that I really like is a bay rat. Um, it's sort of like a bomber. It's, uh, it doesn't do much in the water. It has a very tight, subtle wobble, just flatlining them behind boards, experimenting with how far back behind the board uh, that we're running them, and they're very, very effective. This color here, sort of the orange on the bottom and the black on top, that was good in clear water and also some of the muddier water that we fished. Now the next lure, uh, I'm sure most of you would know this, uh, the live target smelt. The thing to note about the, the smelt, they make them in all different uh, shapes. So this one's one of the more stick bait style. It's very straight. Um, they also make a banana one that's uh, much more curved. And to be honest, I haven't really noticed a huge difference uh, in success uh, for the banana versus the straight. What I do notice is a difference between the larger lip and the smaller lip. So this one is uh, rated for seven to nine feet. I really like it. I like this color in clear water. It's very natural. Just your silver with your, your faint pink streak down the side. I really like this one. Um, very effective lure. But as you'll see, that hook is mangled. So <laughs> if you're gonna run a live target, I love the lures, but they gotta step up their hook game. Swap them out as soon as you open the package. And if you're not swapping out your hooks on live targets, you're gonna miss fish for sure. You're gonna lose that big brown at the side of the boat. So make sure you switch your hooks out on those lures. Other than that, uh, I'm gonna go over to the computer and show you some of the approaches that I make. Um, I'm a nine to five guy now and I don't have as much time to fish. So when I'm gonna get my boat ready and get ready to get out there, I wanna make sure that uh, I'm doing that effectively. If I've only got a couple hours to fish, I wanna know what the wind's been doing, where the water is, and there are definitely some tips um, that I can share that uh, will help you better prepare for your time on the water because I know it's precious. So the first thing, um, keep an eye on the wind uh, at all times. Even if you're not fishing, early season, um, the window's small. Uh, you're fishing that really cold water. You're trying to find water that's the right color. So if you can keep a tab on what the wind's been doing, if it's been pounding on shore, if it blew southwest on the south shore and pushed all that warm, dirtier water offshore, um, you know, maybe you're gonna stay home or maybe you're just gonna try something uh, different. With that being said, a uh, tool that I really like to use is Navionics. Um, that's a great way to get your bearings around some of the shoals or what kind of structure there is on the bottom. 
Um, rock piles are usually marked on avionics, um, especially using um, the sonar, I believe it's called, uh, sonar charts on avionics. Now another thing that you can use is a satellite image. Now that is only effective on a clear day because obviously with cloud cover it's going to cover the lake on that image and you won't be able to see it. But if you can get a good image um, you'll know where some of that dirty water has uh, gone to, if it's gone east, if it's gone west, maybe if you haven't been wa watching your winds. So satellite images is a great way um, to kind of get a clue and get a game plan going before you head out. So I hope you enjoyed this video, hope it was uh, informative, and if you like this video, make sure you subscribe, give me a thumbs up down below. Other than that, stay tuned, get outside, and go fishing. What is have done? You broke in the speed and the sound of the loneliness. You're out there running just to be on the line. Yeah.